All right, and another major difference that we have to know between metals and nonmetals is how they become stable. Now, metals, they usually transfer or lose, transfer or lose or get rid of one, two, or three electrons. Now, we talked in the notes, they don't really lose it. It's not like this electron just magically escapes. Remember, there's a positive nucleus that's attracted to that valence electron. So another element really needs to come and pull it away from sodium's positive nucleus. So don't think that they're just like dropping electrons all over the place and can't keep track of their electrons. But they end up losing it. They end up not having it anymore because a nonmetal comes and takes it. So they end up transferring one, two, or three of their valence electrons, the ones that they have in their outermost energy level, and those electrons go to a nonmetal. If there's no nonmetal, this does not happen. And the metal does not become stable. It doesn't become an ion. So when sodium, in this case, it's got 11 protons and 11 electrons. And it's not happy with that one valence. Remember, it's electron cloud. In the first energy level, there's two, then there's eight, then there's one. If it gets rid of this one, if chlorine, in this case, a nonmetal, comes along and takes this one electron away, well, then it's gone. And now the second energy level, which has eight, becomes the outermost energy level. And it's filled. It's got eight, it's got the octet, and sodium's happy about this. So it's not really broken up about getting rid of an electron. But when it does lose one of the negative things, it doesn't have as many negatives. Now it's going to have 10 negatives. So 11 protons, 10 negatives. What do you have more of? These guys. So you're going to become positively charged. They're attracted to negatively charged things. So this chlorine kind of grabs this electron and pulls it away from sodium's nucleus, kind of battles sodium's nucleus, pulls the electron away and wins. And now the electron goes here. Well, now chlorine has all eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Chlorine's got the octet and now it's happy. And it becomes negative because it now has one more negative. So it started as 17 protons and 17 electrons, and now it's gonna have 18 electrons. So it ends up with a negative charge. And that ion that's formed, let me get my eraser here. That ion that's formed when that happens is gonna be opposite charge of the metal. Those two are oppositely charged, so they make an ionic bond. Ionic, you can't have an ionic bond if you don't have two ions, at least two ions. Sometimes there's more. All right, becoming stable for the nonmetals. How do they do it? Well, they have some options, depending on who they're hanging out with. First up, though, noble gases don't need to do this at all. Noble gases, group 818, if you don't know that, write that down somewhere. These guys are naturally stable. They have eight in their outermost energy level. They're nice and happy. They don't have to do anything to fix things. They ignore every element on the periodic table. Think of them as nobility. They don't really deal with the common people. Noble gases ignore every other element on the periodic table. Meanwhile, everybody else who's not a noble gas is struggling to become stable because nobody else but the noble gas has eight electrons in their outermost energy level. They all have less than eight, and none of them are happy about that. So nonmetals have two options. And like I said, it depends who they're with. If the nonmetals are hanging out with a metal, well, then they can take the metal's electrons. They can take the one, two, or the three electrons that they need. And we saw that with chlorine. Chlorine's sitting there saying, I got seven. I need one more. It looks over at a metal and says, hey, you got one. I heard you don't want that. Can I have it? And it goes and takes that electron away from sodium. So if there is a metal around, only if there's a metal around, nonmetals can gain electrons from them. They can become negatively charged. 
and they're going to be attracted to the positively charged uh, cations or metals that they just took the electron from, and they form an ionic bond, positive, negative, attracted. Now, the problem is when there are no metals around, this chlorine, forget these guys, pretend they're not there. Pretend there's a container with just two chlorines. This chlorine's looking around saying, I have seven, I need one more. This chlorine is saying, I have seven, I need one more. They're both thinking, I wish there was a metal. If there was a metal around, the metal could give us each our electron and we'd both be happy. But there, are, there aren't any metals around, it's only non-metals. That's when these guys decide, let's share. Let's pool our electrons together and make everybody happy. So this chlorine, we'll call this chlorine one and chlorine two. This chlorine looks at chlorine two and says, you know what, can I borrow your electron for part of the time? Let it come over here and let it zip around my electron cloud and make me feel like I have eight. And if it does that a couple times, I'll be nice and happy and then I'll send it back to you along with one of my own electrons. So this electron will go back to chlorine two and this one will come with it. And now these two plus the other six will zip around this atom. And it'll go round and round and round and make this chlorine feel like it's got eight. And then those two will come back this way and make sure this one feels like it's got eight. And then they'll go back this way and, and everybody feels like they have eight all the time and everybody's happy because they're sharing. That doesn't happen with these guys. When an ionic bond forms, that electron goes from the metal to the non-metal and it never comes back. This sodium says, if you're going to take my electron, take it, keep it. I don't want it. I don't want that one back. I want to keep eight in my outermost energy level. You give me that one back. What am I going to do with the one? That's not helping me. Take it, keep it. So we end up with these permanent positive one and negative one charges. This, we don't have charges because the electrons don't stay there. They just go back and forth, back and forth. So a major difference between metals and non-metals is how they solve the problem. And if you think about why this happens, Remember, metals have very, very weak nuclear pull. Nonmetals have a very strong nuclear pull. These strong nuclei are going to come over here and look at the weak nuclei and say, I'm just going to take your electrons and I can do it because I'm stronger than you. So that's why metals lose their electrons. And nonmetals, since they have such a strong pull on other electrons and their own, they're very unlikely to give them up. So they can kind of sit there and look back, at, back and forth and back and forth at each other and say, well, I need an extra electron, give me yours. Well, no, I need an extra electron, give me yours. And neither one wants to budge because both of them have really strong nuclei and they're holding on to their electrons really strongly. So they have to compromise and share. So they can either outright steal from a weak nucleus or... If they're both strong, and it's kind of like a tie, they have to share. So it all comes down to those trends we've been talking about. All right, last couple little things. There's a lot of cool properties for metals. But if metals aren't, if the characteristics aren't perfect, metals can be mixed together. We talked about alloys earlier this year. Alloys are solid mixtures of metals. And sometimes some non-metals can make their way in there, like carbon. Here's plain old iron. These are all iron atoms. This is steel. Steel are the iron atoms plus these little tiny carbons stuck in there. And they make it so that the atoms of iron can't move easily because those little carbon atoms kind of, kind of get them uh, stuck in a certain location. The steel is much stronger than the, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, the steel is much stronger than the iron because of those additional little carbon atoms. So when we mix metals with other things, they're not really making a bond, like they're not exchanging electrons, they're just kind of mixing together and it makes the overall product, the overall mixture, stronger or maybe harder or lighter. It's not as heavy or it's more durable. 
It can withstand uh, maybe weather or water or whatever. Um, it can conduct electricity better. It might be able to um, withstand corrosion or some other way um, that it's better. It withstand stress more and so forth. So alloys are mixtures of metals Again, here's a picture of steel. You see all the iron atoms and these little guys in here that kind of lock those iron atoms in place is carbon. So steel is just carbon dissolved in iron. Stainless steel is chromium, nickel, and carbon dissolved in iron. So you throw in some other things. Brass, think about like a brass candlestick or brass doorknob or something. It's little zinc atoms dissolved in copper. And we did this earlier in the year when we looked at the copper penny uh, lab that we did. Sterling silver, copper is dissolved in silver, changes the properties. Bronze is similar to brass, except instead of t uh, zinc dissolved in copper, it's tin dissolved in copper. So you should know a few examples of alloys. Just know that it's not really a, a bond. Nobody's transferring electrons. They're just blended together, but they're done in in such a way that they improve properties drastically. And the last little bit in the in this section and notes here with metals and nonmetals is the wishy-washy ones. The ones that share properties of both metals and nonmetals. And these are the uh, the yellow elements here. Now notice that they share a side with a zigzag line with the exception of aluminum. I can't stress this enough. I understand it. it uh, shares this side and this side, but aluminum is a straight up metal. But the one above it is boron. The one next to it is silicon. Notice it's not silicone. There's, it's not C-O-N-E. It's not that. It's silicon. And you'll see this when we do the metal nominal lab. Uh, germanium, arsenic, antimony, SB, tellurium, and so forth. So these are Elements that do have some properties of the metals, they do have some properties of the nonmetals. Sometimes it depends what other elements they're mixed with, that, and it'll bring out different properties in them. So they have uh, a crazy range of properties, and as a, as a result, they have a lot of uses.